what is up nerds, geeks, and collectors alike, today we are taking a look at the McFarlane The Batman action figure. And as you can see right here, we have the figure and packaging at the front and at the side, as you can see right here, nothing much. At the back, we have the promo image. I think this is also the same image with the card. And I'm not gonna lie, that's a pretty cool image right there. And moving on at the side, nothing much. Again, the Batman at the top of the packaging right here. Nothing much. Once more, just the Batman logo with the McFarlane stamp as well as the 22 moving parts. At the bottom, the legal mumbo jumbo as well as the UPC. Now that's about it for the packaging. And I for one am very excited to unbox this since this is my first McFarlane figure. I gotta say first impression after holding this figure after unboxing it is wow I am extremely blown away. I love the sculpt, I love the color variation and the articulation. But first let's take a look at the stand here as you can see it's a basic round stand with a DC logo and I really like this it's just plain it's simple it's clean that's all you need for a stand as long as it keeps the figure up. It's good enough for me. But truth be told, you don't really need a stand. I mean, he doesn't really need a stand in order to stand up. But as you can see right there, that was the port uh, shown earlier. And the other accessory that this figure comes with is his grapple gun. His grapple gun just pegs onto his right hand. As you can see right there. And it's just molded in this black plastic, no paint whatsoever. But it's okay, not a major deal breaker. Um, I guess we'll have to see in the film if it's just plain black. But I sincerely doubt it. But once again, it's not a major deal breaker. And here we have the tab where you insert his grapple gun. And that's his only accessory. I do wish that McFarlane starts to add additional hands. And I'd be very satisfied. The figure also includes this collectible card. The same image from the back of the packaging. I think this is a scene from the movie as well as the trailer. I think they've shown us this moment while he grapples past these staircases. At the back here we have a data file of Batman if you want to read it, pause it now. Now moving on to the figure itself, let's take a closer look right here. The only painted parts on this figure are very limited. All you have is the face the eyes as well as the gauntlets that's about it the rest are separate pieces of plastic uh, some gray some black pieces of plastic meaning it is less prone to paint chipping the bat logo is a separate piece of plastic the pads are separate pieces of plastic the belt the boots and the cape are made of this separate piece of black plastic from the base of the body and as you can see at the back, here we have some beautiful sculpt work. And the cape as well is beautifully sculpted. And that's about it in terms of the paint as well as the sculpt. Now, I did notice that the eyes are perpetually looking at his left. And I noticed that every figure of the Batman suffered from this. So I picked out the one with the best paint applications on the eyes as well as the mouth. I also noticed that the nose is somewhat crooked. I think there's some um, empty space in between the cowl and the nose on the right side. So I had to look at the figures that had the nose at the center. So that's something to look out for as well because it is noticeable if you really look at it. But from afar, they all look pretty great. My only complaint is the paint on the eyes. I really wish Todd McFarlane would stop with the side eye. And I think Superboy Prime also suffers from that, the side eye, because it limits the figure in terms of photography. Now moving on to the articulation. Batman's head is on a ball joint, meaning he can rotate his head on a 360 and then back. As you can see right here, he can look up that far as well as look down that far. 
His arms are on a butterfly joint, but you have to negotiate with the shoulder pads. The shoulder pads are a separate piece that's glued on the biceps, so you gotta have to negotiate with that. But it's not impossible, you just gotta really adjust. He has a butterfly joint, as you can see right there. You can do a 360. Once again, just negotiate with the shoulder pad, not the end of the world. As you can see, he has a double jointed elbow as well as a aforementioned bicep swivel. As you can see, there you go, double jointed elbow. And out of packaging, the blade on his forearm is bent, the bigger one, because it's made of this very soft plastic. Now, at the wrist, you can rotate his wrist and then move it in as well as out. And I think this is a McFarlane joint. At first, I compared it to a Rebel Tech joint, though I do not have some Rebel Tech, but that's what it reminds me of. He has upper torso articulation, and surprisingly, he has a lower torso articulation. That's very new to me because I mostly collect Hasbro figures, which do not have that. He can kick that far out and move his feet that far out as well. He can do the splits fairly nicely. As you can see right there, you can see the joint. And he does have a thigh swivel. He has double jointed knees. And putting that back, his boot is a separate piece of plastic. So you can rotate that in order to make it look appealing. See right there, and let's just fix this right up. He does rotate as well as a pivot, and he does have toe articulation, it goes down and up again. The toe articulation, very nice addition in terms of articulation, and that's about it for the range of motion for this figure. And now moving on to size comparisons. Now this is a very big figure. It follows the seven inch scale. As you can see right here, Batman stands above seven inches, a little below seven and a half inches because of his horns. So don't expect him to scale with your six inch scale figures. Now here we have, I think the Mattel Walmart exclusive five pack Green Lantern. You can see right here which follows the six inch scale and let's bring out his fellow billionaire and marvel counterpart and as you can see for yourself it does not really scale so to finalize my thoughts on this figure for the color variation i do like what they did where they use separate pieces of plastic instead of painting the figure as well as minimalizing the use of paint the only thing i can complain about the paint is the eyes but that's more of a nitpick because that's a stylistic choice i wish the eyes were looking at you dead center instead of having a side eye for playability i like that they added a stand if you decide to put him in a dynamic pose but if he's in a vanilla pose he doesn't have any problem standing up without the stand the possibility it's amazing it's what you need for a batman figure so i don't have anything to complain about that however i do have a problem with the accessories i do wish that he did come with additional hands maybe some fist would have sufficed and not to mention if you want to get a right grabby hand you need to purchase the bat cycle it's not the worst but i wish that it came with the actual Batman figure. But nonetheless, I am really happy with this particular figure. That's my only gripe. But if you are a Batman fan, I do recommend this figure a lot. I like the design of this figure. And I've already said what needed to be said in terms of sculpt, paint, and playability. So, till next time, see ya!